Nazi zombies. What more can you say? Okay, everybody, today we're going all the way back to 1977 to take a look at a little movie that was strangely ahead of its time, but following the crowd, it was what it was. We'll get to all that in a moment. We are talking about shockwaves. Before we go any further, though, before we dig into this gem any more, once and again, and you know, as always, to the trailer. You are now in the deep end of horror. Shockwaves. Once they were almost human. You mean to say that what we all saw out there is just a mirage? It was a minor underwater disturbance with a hot sky acting on a cold current coming from a mile down below. Something unknown, something unforeseen, something unspeakable lives below, and it lives to destroy. <laughs> They have risen. We created the perfect soldier from cheap hoodlums and thugs and a good number of pathological murderers and sadists as well. We call them the Totem Core, the Death Core. Creatures more horrible than any you can imagine. From beyond the dead, from beneath the living, from the depths of hell's ocean, everything they touch will die in the deep. Shock waves. Give me the flashlight. Or we'll be left with nothing but that oil lamp. You don't need it. I need all the help I can get out there. Now let me have it. Starring the Masters of Shock, John Carradine and Peter Cushing. You are indeed very stupid. Now it is too late. Now the total horror has begun. Now there is no way out. Now the ocean becomes a graveyard. you run the quicker you die because once they were almost human shock waves the deep end of horror all right this motion picture was directed by ken wiederhorn Right. Yeah. Okay, he did stuff like King Frat, and he did stuff like Eyes of a Stranger, and Meatballs, well, part two, and Return of the Living Dead, well, part two, and Dark Tower, and A House in the Hills, and he did TV too, you know, like 21 Jump Street, Freddy's Nightmares, Dark Justice. So, is he going to jump out at you in the pantheon of great directors? No. But he was in the game. Starring as the SS Commander. I don't even know if he's really starring, but he's the biggest name in this thing. We're talking Peter Cushing. Legend. Let's go by the numbers. We're talking about he was in stuff like The Beast Must Die, The Creeping Flesh, Horror Express, The Skull, The Curse of Frankenstein, The Hound of the Baskervilles, At the Earth's Core, which I love, The Satanic Rites of Dracula, Twins of Evil, The Vampire Lovers, and some little shit flick, Star Wars, New Hopelessness, I don't know what it was, but you know, that little teeny movie. Anyway, legend, legend. Starring as Captain Morris, another legend, really, honestly, John Carradine. He was in a million things, so we'll just scratch the surface. We're talking about he was in The Howling, he was in The Ten Commandments, and The Nesting, and Monstroid. And the Bees, and Dr. Dracula, and The Shootist, and Silent Night, Bloody Night, and 
Bigfoot and vampire hookers, showdown at Boot Hill, tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of TV work, and of course he was in a movie I already reviewed, or probably a couple of them anyway, <sighs> The Sentinel. So, John Carradine, come on man, he's been a zillion things, it's just the way it goes. Plain Rose, Brooke Adams. You know the big one, but we'll get to it. We're talking about she was in stuff like Days of Heaven and Cuba and The Dead Zone and The Babysitter's Club. And she was on TV, you know, Kojak, Bob Newhart, Moonlighting, Brain Dead, Monk, which is kind of convenient for her because she's been married to Tony Shalhoub for like decades. And of course, she was in the legendary, one of the great all time remakes of all times, if not just great flicks of all times, Invasions of the Body Snatchers. Yes. Yes. Plank Keith. Luke Halpern. Doesn't jump out at you, but his career got off to a big start when he was just a kid. We're talking about he was in Flipper. He was in Flipper, The New Adventures. He was in Island of the Lost, and you know, a lot of TV, you know. TV, yeah, Route 66, and, uh, Peter Pan, and Death Valley Days, and Naked City, and The Defenders, and of course, the Flipper TV show, which was Huge. Yeah, his career kind of died out after all that kind of shit. He popped up here and there. But for a while, kid was riding high. There's also a couple other names in here. I'm just going to fly through them really quick. You got like Jack Davidson playing Norman. He was on TV, you know, Texas, Loving, Law and Order, and Oz. And you got Fred Bush who plays Chuck. He was in stuff like Spring Break and Caddyshack and Porky 2 and Porky's Revenge. And he popped up in a great motion picture, The Mean Season. So. Yeah, there's a couple other faces you'll recognize. There's a couple other faces in this you're not going to recognize. Doesn't really make a difference, but that's the cast. Let's get going to the story. All right, everybody, we're going to keep this to 90 seconds or less. So we can keep it short, keep it fast, keep it entertaining, keep it moving, and so we can all get to where we'd much rather be. The summation. You got this girl. She's adrift at sea in this little teeny dingy rowboat. And before you know it, she gets rescued, and the movie turns into a giant flashback to fill you in with. Led up to that point. Well, here we go. She was a number of tourists on this little teeny, well, not so teeny, but small boat. And they all paid to go on a tour on this boat that is basically a rundown, rip off sham of a tourist thing. It is what it is. While they're out there, the boat breaks down. Hey, Go figure. Things a piece of shit is what it is. It's loaded with a few tourists, a cranky old captain played by John Carradine, and his young helper, and a drunk cook. It is what it is. Before you know it, though, in the middle of the night, they get sideswiped by a big, giant ghost ship. Runs them down, smashes them onto the rocks. Before you know it, they're taking on water. They decide, well, let's get the hell out of Dodge and go to this island that's nearby. Hmm. They go to the island. On the way there, they find out the old captain, the old cranky bastard, is actually dead when he kind of shows up underneath the boat. Apparently, he drowned or was drowned while he was checking out the hull of the ship. The rest of them, they make it to the island. They start looking around. They start finding whatever they can find. Of course, they find this big, giant old motel, which they think is abandoned, except inside of it, there's this very reclusive, mysterious old man. Ooh, spooky. Turns out to be Peter Cushing, but we'll get to more of that later. Anyway... Well, long story short, these guys start popping up. These guys are start coming out of the water. These guys are apparently the living dead, and these guys that are Nazi zombies. I shit you not. Well, it turns out that Peter Cushing was an SS commander, and that the old Nazi regime were working on groups of super soldiers. And he was in charge of a group of these super mutated, genetically engineered soldiers that were specifically designed to work under water and be amphibian. But they were too crazy, they were violent, they would kill their own, they were psychotic, and his order was to sink that ship and get rid of all the evidence of these Nazi zombies. He went to this island to live, but they still live in the surrounding waters around this island, and apparently, I don't know, kill anybody who comes close or whatever the hell the case might be, because that's what's happening in this one. It is what it is. People run, people hide, People are chased by Nazi zombies, and, you know, it is what it is. You get the idea. You know what I mean. This is not rocket science. Okay, everybody. Does, I almost called it Nazi zombies, does shockwaves work? Well, I guess, in a way. If you like this kind of motion picture, which I basically do, you'll enjoy it. But does it work? Eh, we'll get to more of that later. First off, the directing. The directing, it is what it is for this kind of movie. Kind of 
lackluster kind of plane, a little bit boring. But I don't know if it's so much the directing that is bad or just the cinematography. You know it's one of those motion pictures where they had a cameraman, a sound guy, and they just said go. I mean, you don't look for great lighting, don't look for anything spectacular. It is one of those kind of motion pictures. If you can handle shit like Track of the Moon Beast and Squirm Fuck It, you'll be fine here. The writing? Eh, not bad. Actually, might even be a little bit better than directing, really. I mean, it's not gone with the wind, for Christ's sakes, but it's not bad. Nobody does anything or says anything too egregiously that's so bad that just throws you out of the motion picture. Yes, there's a lot of stereotypes in it. We'll get to that in a moment. But the writing's not half bad, so you can kind of roll with that. The acting. The acting's actually fairly good. I mean, come on, you got Peter Cushing. Come on, you got Carradine. Brooke Adams delivers. She does a really good job. Halpern does a pretty good job himself, so the acting's not bad. It's not astounding, but for this kind of motion picture, it's above average. Now let's get back again to does this motion picture work. Again, yeah, it kind of does, but you're not going to get bowled over by anything that's going to blow your mind. First off, the motion picture starts off where you see the lone survivor of everything. So now you've basically destroyed any real suspense to the rest of the motion picture because you already know how it ends. I hate when movies do this shit. I honestly do. But this motion picture does it. It's one of those motion pictures you're like, she makes it, everybody else dies. Let's go back and watch how they die. So there's not really a sense of terror or dread. It's more a sense of melancholy. We're kind of looking at it like, yeah, everybody's going to die. Let's just see how it takes place. Let's see how it goes. And that's basically what you're in store for. Even at the end of it, when she's going off with her and the young shipmate, and they're about to make it, you know he ain't going to make it because you know she's the only one they find in the goddamn boat. So... Again, it robs any real suspense of what's going to happen, who's going to make it, and just walks you through the motions. And when I say everybody in this thing is a little bit of a stereotype, what I mean is that there's those characters you've seen them a million times before, even leading up to this point in 1977. You know what I'm talking about? You got the cranky old ship captain, been done five million times in every other goddamn motion picture. You got that one couple where the husband is loud and obnoxious, and the wife just deals with them for reasons you don't understand, and always looks kind of embarrassed by him. Basically the same couple that was in The Poseidon Adventure, played by Ernest Borgnine. In the, you, you get it. Everybody is somebody you've seen. The likable shipmate, the pretty girl in the gold bikini. Everybody is something you've seen in a bunch of movies, even up until that point, and you've even seen 10 million more times since that point. And other plot holes to this thing? There's plot holes all over this thing. Beyond the plot holes, just the the feeling that they didn't know where they were going when they kind of got there. Like there's parts of this motion picture where they get hit by the big ghost ship. And you're looking at the big ghost ship. And the big ghost ship doesn't look anything like the skeletal ship that they supposedly ran into the next morning when they can see in daylight and all that kind of stuff. And you're like, at one moment it seems like this is going to be a ghost movie where the ship is hunting people down. Kind of like the movie Ghost Ship, which I think I reviewed way back. And you're just like, okay, this is where this is going to go. It's been done before, but let's go down that road. And all of a sudden, that whole angle kind of just disappears and it turns into a zombie flick, for all intents and purposes. And you're kind of like, do they just, huh? Or do they just want us to buy that that ship that we see on the rocks all broken up is the same ship that basically ran them down the night before? It just kind of looks a little bit weird, you know what I mean? It's like, did they change feelings midstream? Did they change story? I, I don't know. But it's just one of the many plot holes and many gaps of logic that you're going to see in here. But in the end, what really matters is this motion picture worth watching. Is it a fun enough ride to sit down for literally 90 minutes or probably less and enjoy yourself? And in that realm, yeah, yeah, it kind of works. If you're sitting around, it's on YouTube, it's for free. If you're sitting around, you're killing time one night, you don't know what to watch, you can throw it in. You'll be kind of entertained because the real value of this motion picture is it's one of the first movies, if you will, to have the whole image or the whole concept of Nazi zombies. You got the scary zombies that we've been seeing forever, and then you got the batty batty Nazis from every motion picture of World War II. So you've got those two things, and they just slam them together, and there you go. I mean, and keep in mind, this is 1977. Lately, there's a lot of movies that are out there floating around where there's like zombified Nazis running around, the undead, and you got Nazi zombies in video games that everybody loves to play. So this was kind of ahead of its time by being like one of the first to ever do that, but at the same time it was just riding the coattails of other motion pictures, saying we'll take some of this, we'll take some of that, we'll take some of this, we'll take some of that, we'll smash it all together and give this picture 
Nazi zombies. So if you're looking for something to watch one night, or you're having a backyard party dedicated to a bunch of shit flicks thrown on a projector, you could easily take this motion picture. You can start off the night where you don't care if people aren't paying attention because they're still walking around eating with a movie like Track of the Moon Beast. And then you can go right into something like this and have a good time as people are starting to settle in and they're watching and they're paying a little bit more attention. And then you can drop off into something like Squirm and round out the night with something like Night of the Living Dead. It fits in that family. Maybe not as great as a couple of the titles I mentioned. Maybe better than some others. Like Track of the Moon Beast or The Dark or shit like that. But for a middle ground, low budget, shock schlock horror flick about a bunch of people on an island with amphibian zombie Nazis whose clothes never deteriorate by the way and if you want to kill them all you have to do is take off their sunglasses I guess it's a fun ride okay everybody be good take care stay out of trouble be kind to a friend be polite to a stranger but most of all never ever and I mean ever, take any bullshit from anybody. See you soon.